Well, David, we move right on to our next guest. I am so excited to introduce the founder of SF Jazz, Randall Klein. Randall, welcome to The Great Pause. Great to be here, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. Randall, start off a little bit with the history of jazz in San Francisco. How much of a jazz town is the Bay Area? Or I, I said, how much of a jazz town is the Bay Area? But really, let's focus right on San Francisco. Talk to me about the history here. Well, San Francisco jazz really started uh, in the in the gold rush. Uh, Barbary Coast uh, was uh, the, the site of lots of houses of ill repute and bars, and along with that, there were some jazz sprinkled in there. Uh, so, very from the very beginning of uh, sort of the, when when jazz was being established in the early 1900s, uh, it, 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 became, it was an integral part of San Francisco. Uh, the person who claimed to have invented jazz, Jelly Roll Morton, actually lived here in the early 1900s, lived on Market Street. Um, and there's a long history of great jazz clubs and great musicians that have come out of San Francisco. So SF Jazz is really just a, uh, an evolution, an extension of, of a history here. Oh my gosh. So what does a pandemic like this do to this community? Well, it's 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 devastating to this community and, and, and all communities in the world of, of the arts and music and jazz in particular. Uh, people make their livings there and they fulfill their their life goals through their their vocations. And in this case, it's being a musician. So, you know, we generally put on close to 500 shows a year at the SF Jazz Center. We've got uh, another multiple hundreds of education events that we do along with that. and. and and with those 500 shows, there's hundreds of musicians that, that come through the, the center from all around the world, from here in the Bay Area, yeah. of course, like throughout the country and, and, and other parts. So it, it's there, there's no work, uh, basically, is what it's doing right. uh, for, for people. And it's, uh, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, two of our closest family friends are full-time jazz musicians here in the Bay Area. I live on the other side of the bridge. I live in West Oakland, which is also quite a, a rich historical history and place for jazz in this area. I haven't yet made it to the SF Jazz Center in Hayes Valley. So tell me a little bit more about that. I, I'm so anxious to go. Tell me what, what I should expect to see when doors do open back up. So the center was built and we opened in January of 2013. SF Jazz as an organization has been here in the Bay Area since 1983. Uh, we started as a small community organization that featured only Bay Area artists, and we grew and grew and grew. Eventually, uh, our kind of flagship product at that time was, you know, developed into was the San Francisco Jazz Festival. Uh, war, you know, its its excellence and uh, presenting artists from again all over the world. Uh, and then the organization, we're a nonprofit presenter, much like set up very similar to say the San Francisco Symphony or San Francisco Opera. And over the course of our evolution as an organization, uh, we decided it would be, um, well, we wanted to look into the idea of what it would mean to have our own building. We presented over the 30 years prior to opening the SF Jazz Center in, in probably 25 different venues around the Bay Area, mostly in San Francisco, but also in Oakland, Paramount Theater, actually is still a venue we use occasionally as well too. So uh, the center opened and the intent was to create the, 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 the best jazz experience that could be possible in the world. It, it, it's the product of a $66 million capital campaign to build this place. We are so fortunate uh, to have such incredible support in the Bay Area to help something like this happen. A building like this devoted to just but the Bay Area so that it can happen and it's going extremely well. Uh, in the, uh, this was to be our ninth season coming up in September uh, in the building, uh, coming close to the 10th anniversary of, of the project. Uh, but, um, you know, the Bay, you know, back to the, the history is, it's, it's become an important part of the cultural life of San Francisco. Uh, our season opens September alongside our now neighbors, the symphony and the, and the opera, and, uh, you know, much anticipated, um, you know, buzz around this one here. You know, we really, in a, in a short amount of time in the building, although over the course of the 30 plus years, 
uh, we become a real integral part of the fabric of the cultural life of San Francisco. So uh, yeah. the, the center, you know, you know, physically in the same neighborhood as those those great institutions. And we are now, you know, trying to react to this crisis and, and, and continue to do what we can to stay open and healthy so that we, when we do come back, um, we'll be uh, better than ever. I know you don't have a crystal ball, a magic crystal ball, but do you have any sense of when we might be able to walk through those doors again? Well, in some form or another, um, you know, the optimistic. Basically, we're hoping for something. Uh, just recently, there was a, you know, a, a first test case actually in Arkansas of a, of a rock concert that took place, uh, and there's a lot to be learned. But basically, the industry is is um, really figuring it out. Um, you know, it's going to be you know, social distancing in the hall and, and lots of health precautions as we gradually move into it. But um, you know, I'm, I'm optimistically shooting for something in September uh, when we would have opened our season. Uh, we were scheduled to open the, the Thursday after uh, Labor Day weekend, um, and if there's some way to do it, we we will. Uh, we've got you know we're in the middle of an experiment right now, a program. We're broadcasting a show every week, every Friday. It's called Fridays at Five, and it, it may be a hybrid of what those concerts are, uh, but live. So they look like live concerts, actually. So I can launch a little bit into what Fridays at Five is. Uh, but we, I was just uh, going we, to ask you about how you're staying connected to your audience. I mentioned that we have two very close family friends who are full-time jazz musicians. They're giving lessons over video chat, like similar to how we're chatting now. They are also giving concerts. So let's dive into to Fridays at 5. I know you have a really exciting musician this week. And then is this going to go on weekly until doors open again? Yes, and, and probably after we reopened the building as well, too. So when we built the building in, in 2013, we, we set it up with full-on broadcast capabilities, uh, camera systems, and we've been recording most of the concerts that have taken place there. And you know, one of the things that SF Jazz has a reputation for is sort of excellence in programming and, and programs that only happen uh, at the SF Jazz Center. And so we've taken, gone back through the archives here and sort of taken sort of a best of what we've presented over the last few years and, uh, you know, kind of edited those concerts slightly down to about one hour. And it is a way to sort of get into a different kind of rhythm right now of that Friday at five o'clock, end of the work week, uh, when we're, we were all in that normal-ish kind of rhythm uh, and time to relax a little bit and watch a, a great performance. What's a, a little different about this performance is you can You'll, you'll see the performance is shot in a particular style that uh, we've designed to feel a little more present and live. Uh, in fact, actually, the first few broadcasts when we did, this is the seventh week of the program coming up this week. Uh, we, we had a lot of people on the chat box, which is part of the, the program, asking, you know, why are all those people there? <laughs> well, how did you get permission to do that? And uh, so it, it really gives the sense that you, you're there. So basically, these are concerts that we, we charge uh, or, you know, to become a member of SF Jazz at $5 a month, basically, to, to watch these programs that are broadcast every Friday at 5 o'clock. Uh, and then there is a tip jar attached to that as well, too, to your question about what we can do also for musicians. And that tip jar, you know, you, you, you euphemistically called, uh, people can contribute what they like, and that money goes uh, between us and the performer. We split 50-50. And it's a way to help musicians who aren't working get through this particular time. And so the tip charts yeah. have been great. Last week we sent there, we're, we, we're going to send off, you know, we checks in the range of anywhere from three to $5,000 every week from the broadcast from the tip jar to artists, which is fantastic. Um, it, it helps us, our staff keep working. Our technical crew is helping in all these broadcasts, uh, you know, doing sound and, and, you know, what you're doing right here on your show. So. Randall, you're reading my mind. You're getting to my next question. Thank you so, so much. I, I just have really one, maybe two quick questions for you. I want to know a little bit about that Art Tatum photograph behind you there. So this is a, it's a, it's a great story. So uh, not a great story. It's a great photograph. I really, it, the photographer's name is Herman Leonard, uh, probably the greatest documenter of jazz. 
uh, from New Orleans. And uh, when we opened the building, actually there's a tie. I, I, I've owned this photo for a long, long time. Uh, we did uh, something years ago where we I, I had access to, to purchase this print. And uh, I, I love it. My father was a piano player. I love piano. I love Art Tatum. Um, so it, it, it's very, and it's a poignant, deep photo of him not playing the piano, but, uh, you know, contemplative. Uh, when we opened the building, we, we're right across the street from an abandoned San Francisco Unified School District uh, school, uh, Commerce High School, that's been shuttered for close to 50 years. And it's not the most attractive building. The windows, a lot of them are broken or in disrepair as well, too. And be, the, the, as you saw from the photo earlier of the SF Jazz Center, it's all windows and it's all about looking in and looking out. We really wanted to place ourselves in, in the neighborhood of Hayes Valley where you could see what was in this building. This was the, the you know, part of the architecture we chose and beautifully executed by the architect, uh, Mark Cavaniero, who also lives in the Bay Area. But this idea to be able to look in and see what's in the building. Well, when you can look in and see in what's happening in the building into the lobby spaces and even into the two performance spaces there, you can also look out from the lobbies. And a lot of the view was onto this building that was uh, not looking so great. So we approached the San Francisco School District and asked if we could install uh, these jazz portraits uh, in the windows. And I believe that's, his, uh, I think there's 21 windows that, that are there. And um, we approached Herman Leonard's estate uh, if we could use some of his portraits. This particular photo behind me here actually is, was one of the portraits in those windows. And since then we've had three, it's, it's become actually an interesting exhibition space for the neighborhood. Um, so we've had three different photographers rotate through there now, and one was a San Francisco photographer, Jim Marshall. Uh, we were just about to change out to uh, another photographer. Uh, so, you know, every year or twice a year, we unveil a new exhibition across the street. So when people are in the building or you're driving by in Hayes Valley, you see this beautiful display of, of historic jazz figures uh, that help set a context for what we do in this very contemporary building and looking forward for jazz. So. Sorry for the long-winded explanation of Art Tatum, but uh, <laughs> we're, we're also huge Jim Marshall fans, so I love that. And it's also another way that you're really supporting the arts in San Francisco. We can't thank you enough for that. Last question: How are you, Randall Klein, getting through these unprecedented times? Well, it's um, like I think just how everyone else is. You know, you you've been dealt a card. We've all been dealt a card, and um, Life doesn't stop, so you keep moving. My, you know, my wife is uh, active, busy. She, you know, full-time job. She, she's able to do that from home as well too. I'm able to do that. You know, the, the kind of common refrain from everybody is uh, how many Zoom calls they've been on in the day, and that's sort of been our life. I mean, SF Jazz is, um, you know, is, is is a real institution, and we've got to keep rolling. And so the day-to-day, -day, not only of how we keep things going day to moving day to day, but also trying to anticipate to back to your earlier question, you know, what's your most, you know, when do you see returning? Uh, we've got to play out all these scenarios right now. We've got to run, you know, try to figure out what we're going to look like when we open, what we're going to look like while we're closed, how we do all these things. So um, how Randall Klein personally is doing, I'm, I'm very involved in, in the, the future of SF Jazz and trying to figure out uh, the ways we can actually turn this crisis into an opportunity for this organization so that we do come back as a better organization and more connected to our community. And Fridays at Five has really you know, been a, a beautiful thing for us to, to be connected um, in, you know, somewhat with the community. And we're gonna start looking at expanding the, the, those digital offerings. You know, there really is no replacement for being live. And I guess personally to your question, you know, I really miss being there myself. I mean, it's, uh, you know, nothing gives me greater joy than to sit in that auditorium, uh, you know, gorgeously intimate, beautiful auditorium, you know, acoustically perfect place to hear music for someone who's a jazz fan. So it, it, it's torturous not to be there. So uh, I'm really looking forward to being back there and, um, uh, you know, missing. I mean, I guess I'm really missing the, you know, what live music can, can bring to my life, but, you know, I, it's also missing the joy of being able to spread that around a little bit like we, we do at the center. Well, you'll have a whole lot more people joining you this Friday for Fridays at 5. I know I'll be there. I know David will be there. Everyone here from Beyond Picks and the Great Pause. So thank you so much for everything you're doing for our community, 
for jazz in our community and just stay healthy, stay well. And we hope to talk with you again very soon. Great, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, David, what's your favorite jazz song? Oh boy, that's hard. I mean, you know, as 